every time you win, you, you feel feel good at the end of it. That's what you're trying to do, and, and we we got that done. I did think we had to grind it out, which was not a shock. I mean, that football team, San Diego State, they're physical, they're going to run the ball, they got some good players, challenges scheme on defense, and uh, created some, some problems at times offensively, especially early for us. And I'm just proud of the group to be able to just keep fighting and grinding defensively for the most part. You know, gave up a few that, you know, we'll, we'll learn from on tape. But outside of that, I thought they kept us in this thing and kept on battling throughout. I was really pleased, pleased with that. So another awesome home crowd. Can't thank Beaver Nation again. Sell out. The place is rocking. Makes a difference for the opponent. And so it feels good to, to finish non-conference play 3-0. and up. After, after winning pretty one-sided the last couple weeks, do you feel like this was a game you guys kind of needed the way, it, the way it played out? Or, or is, that over, is that overrated? No, I think, you know, I think our guys know these games are going to get more and more difficult. They're going to be closer, tighter throughout, not just, you know, for one half type thing. So I was proud of these guys. They kept on battling, battling. you know, it was. You know, is we're scrapping out there back and forth, you know, chipping away. It's three to nothing, it's six to nothing, a long time in the you know, one possession game. So um, we know that's that type of game is coming and today was was kinda like that. In regard to the passing game, uh, DJ's been pretty accurate so far this season. Today it was a struggle for quite a while. How much of that was his passes? How much of the receivers just not being able to get separation? After? Yep, there was a combination of a few things. I think, yeah, there's a couple of throws that he can make that were not as accurate as we'd like. Uh, there's a couple of times we were not on the same page route running wise, thinking he was going to break out, he breaks in, that kind of thing. Again, give some credit to San Diego State. That scheme is not easy. The way they change looks pre snap, post snap. Uh, and so they made it hard. Talk a little bit about the tackles for loss and sacks today. It really seemed like even though San Diego State was maybe able to hit some underneath stuff, when it was important, you guys were able to get pressure on them. Yep, uh, you know, Chatfield, Takari Hickel, uh, squeezing that pocket. The, the guy can make some throws in the pocket, and he did. Um, but yeah, we, uh, for the most part, contained him to escape in the pocket, hit some under, underneath stuff that hurt us at times, um, but was pleased at the line of scrimmage on defense. Speaking of the opposing DB core, they, you know, gave you guys a little bit of trouble again. And they were, of course, coming into this game, one of the best DB cores in the nation, six picks, heading into this one, eight picks now in total, I think 10 turnovers in total through four games for them. Now, what sort of challenges did they, do you feel like they gave you offensively and what did you kind of see? You know, the first pick, you know, we were throwing a ball, it's just a little bit high. Anthony Gould's going up. I think DJ's going to a decent spot where the ball gets tipped up there and they get it. And then ultimately on the second one to Silas, we're actually wanting that coverage. We want man on man. We want to throw it back across the field and they made a better play than us. And so give those guys some credit. Uh, turnovers are going to take place. Talked about it a little bit. Um, and so it's pleased with the, the response of our guys kept, kept out. Were you mad at those turnovers? You talked about last week, you said you'd figure out if you were going to be mad. Or you... Yeah, never pleased, obviously. Because uh, again, we could execute better and we're not going to turn the thing over. But you can play this game. It's not a game of perfect. Turnovers are going to take place. We're going to have to tighten that up as these games get closer and closer because uh, that, that can make a huge difference. Late in the second quarter, I noticed that you had swapped uh, Dramat McCourt's or defense had swapped Dramat McCourt for Tyrese Ivy Jr. Was that was Tyrese injured at all? Was that just part of the kind of just the feel of the game? What happened there? Yeah, I feel actually really good about both those players. We want to get him in the game, and he's done a good job. And so that was the, nothing to do with, with in, injury. Uh, McCoy's just earned some reps. Not to keep repeating the same thing that everyone's saying over and over again, but obviously you guys struggled a little bit on offense, but how important was it to just, you know, be able to, for the players even, just to show themselves that they're just one play away from reaching the end zone? Well, it's kind of, because we were productive. I mean, I look at our yardage and things, we're moving the ball, and then we, you know, so I think it's first drive, we got a couple of penalties, backed us up, took us out of that. We didn't convert on third down, we're not on the same page on a route there, and then we're kicking a field goal. And again, that scheme, San Diego State makes it tough. We had a couple of three and outs. We turned the ball over a couple of times. We've also had a couple of big plays. Then, you know, Anthony Gould toward the end separated things. You played three times. Which game did you get the most out of as a team? Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I do think the, you, know, you learn more and more each week. I think this week you learned a ton. Again, the talent level, the schematics, battling back from some adversity. I think we learned a, a ton today. The touchdown by Gray. 
What's it like when you've got a play design like that in your pocket and you and you know you're pulling onto it? And and what goes into the decision of when to pull that out and to use a play like that? Yep, we've uh, we've had it in the playbook uh, for the last couple of years. Just an opportune time didn't present itself. I actually talked a little bit about it with the team uh, yesterday because it presented. We felt like we get down there tight that this was a play that would you know give us an advantage and they. Practice it, Josh would catch it balls. DJ actually throws a really good ball, it's well designed. And you know, the situation arises, you practice it enough, you got to trust your execution. Um, a couple injuries today, any update on Kaya or Ryan Cooper? Yep, not not a definite update. Uh, sounds early is Micaiah might be a little bit longer term. Uh, Was it I, knee or hamstring again? Yeah, I, I don't know that. Um, and then on Coop, uh, haven't heard that that's a long term thing, but still don't know. You've made a big emphasis this year on wanting to get explosive plays. Is that one thing that you take out of this game that you can feel pretty good about because there was five or six pretty explosive plays with Gould on top of that? Yeah, yeah, with Gould, I think Damien's can be explosive. Velling has a sweet catch, uh, good throw by DJ to separate things. we got to be able to complement that. I just think in general, whether it's us, any offense, the ability to you know create 20, 30-yard gains, it's hard to go 10, 12, 14 plays and execute the whole time without kind of hurting yourself or dropping a ball or penalty there. So it's vitally important. How important, obviously, you mentioned, you know, not happy with offensive output, but how important is it that, you know, your defense, you can really hang your hat on that and they can keep you in the game, even when they're not even forcing turnovers, just playing good defense? Yeah, they played, like I said, for the majority of the game, played really good defense, getting off the field, uh, pressuring the quarterbacks, you know, the run game in general. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, did have a couple of plays that we gave away in the second half that we got to tighten up because those will really hurt us. I do think they dropped a couple of balls that you know those are those are caught that'll hurt us. And uh, but overall defensively, obviously give up whatever was nine points, you, you'll take that. Coach three and zero, obviously non-conference. You guys head to the Pac-12 play next week against Washington State. We've seen how good this Cougars team can be. What do you think? you guys are most going to have to improve upon over the next seven days to get ready for a tough team in a tough crowd in Pullman. Yeah. Uh, potentially very important game for you guys this season. Yeah, I just think it's important. We're improving each week. The more and more tape we put out there, whoever we're playing next, we got to take a step in and improve. Know some of our flaws, some of the things that we got to get better at moving forward. Uh, that'll be a challenge. I haven't looked at those guys much at all, um, but it starts Pac-12 play. I know conference realignment has been a discussion over the last couple of months. Knowing that you guys and Washington City are the last two that are going to be a part of the Pac-12, at least as we know it right now, do you find it at all ironic that the first game of the Pac-12 season, you guys are going against Washington State again, the, the two last members of the Pac-12 facing off against each other right. in the first game of Pac-12 competition? You know, I, I, no, I haven't I've put a lot of thought into it. Uh, you know, the, the schedule is what it what it is. Knew we were going to play them every year because we were, you know, on on the schedule. But uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, try to digest this one, and, and then we'll move forward.